So Harry, on that note, how exactly is it spread from person to person and then from country to country? So on a person to person level, it's mainly through bodily fluids. Uh, so you've got blood, you've got saliva, you've got semen. Those are the three most common. Okay, And it's not it's actually not a super easy to spread disease. You have mm. to touch someone who is very ill, the later stage of the disease. It's very obvious that they're unwell. Mm. And then that, even then, it doesn't just absorb through the skin. You have to have a cut or through the mouth, eyes, ears, mm. things like that. Um, but it is still happening. And then on a, on a grander scale, how it gets from, say, Guinea to America, the restrictions are currently quite lax. So they have scanning at the airport, so they'll scan your temperature. Um, one of the main symptoms of Ebola is it's a virus, so you've got a fever, so you're, you're hot, they can see you're hot. Okay. But they've proven recently uh, that that can be spoofed simply by taking an ibuprofen. Mm. You know, a, a neurofilm will stop you from showing up on the thing. And then they'll ask you where you've been. They'll say, have you been to Liberia? And if you say, no, that's it. So mm. there's a lot of people who are realizing they're going to get better treatment than they are in America than they are in Liberia. So they're going to say, no, I haven't been there. Get to America. And that's how it's spreading at the moment. Mm. Yeah. And then what exactly are the symptoms? And I mean, uh, I'm assuming a lot of them are sort of masked in the beginning. So mm. you, you could be in contact with someone who's got it and not mm. necessarily, necessarily know until a few weeks later. Yeah, that's uh, one of the serious problems is that it literally looks like a flu to begin with. You've got a fever, you've got headaches, you've got nausea, classic virus symptoms. And then if you go to a doctor with a, with a fever and a headache, you can tell you to go home and take a panada. Mm. But then we get to the more serious symptoms. So uh, the most well-known is probably bleeding. Uh, it's mainly internal bleeding, but it can, in, when it gets to sort of the end stages of the disease, you're bleeding out your eyes, your ears, it gets pretty gruesome. And then this is really where it spreads because all of that, that blood is infected. Mm. And that's, if you're not sort of in hospital with nurses in protective clothing, whoever touches you is almost certainly going to get Ebola. Mm. And that's sort of the way it's spreading. And then the worst case scenario, you die. And they think this might be where actually the, the greatest amount of transmission is occurring is from corpses. Mm. Um, originally, when the disease broke out and there wasn't too much fear around it, families were really reluctant to let the uh, doctors without borders come and bury their children. They mm. wanted to do it themselves. So they'd be handling this body and then they'd all contract Ebola. Mm. And this was really unfortunate. And it's getting better. Um, there's a lot more awareness around it now that, you know, three and a half thousand people have died. But um, we've also got the issue of, in Sierra Leone today, the burial teams are now on strike because they haven't been paid. So now you've got corpses piling up in the street, you've got people walking past, mm -hmm. and it's, this is just worst case scenario. The strike may have been resolved, it's unclear at the moment, but things like that are what's really going to cause problems down the line. Mm. I mean, does Africa have the healthcare systems, are, are they equipped to deal with this becoming like a serious pandemic? Yes and no. Um, they've dealt with them before. Ebola's had outbreaks in the past and they haven't got past sort of a, couple of, a couple of hundred deaths at the worst. Mm. Um, what's happened this time is because the spread has been so much more, the hospitals have been completely and totally overwhelmed. Mm. There's literally no space in a hospital in West Africa for Ebola patients these days. So you've got Doctors Without Borders who have come in and set up, I think there are five treatment centers at the moment, along with a couple of other um, organizations who have set up some. That's where most of the capacity is now, but still, it's way, way short of what there needs to be. Um, and the survival rate, once you've been infected? Yeah, this is a, period, uh, a point of conjecture. It goes up to 90% death rate. That's what's often reported, 90%. You can't really tell until the outbreak is over. At the moment, we're sitting around half, um, but the World Health Organization have said that that almost certainly will increase um, as this thing begins to wind up, whenever that may be. Mm. So the final question, how will Ebola be stopped? Well, the original um, claim from the experts was that you have to stop it in West Africa. If it gets out, then it becomes an absolute nightmare. And now it has basically got out. I mean, you've got cases in America, you've got cases in Europe. The, the WHO has said it's going to spread across Europe. Mm. So this is the real question, how are we going to stop Ebola? The big hope today is because of these cases in Europe and America, people start taking more notice. The, um, in the UK, the COBRA, which is the emergency committee of the government, they're meeting this afternoon to decide what they can do. And hopefully now you're going to get the resources, the people and the awareness to, to stop it in its tracks.